How you guys doing? Hi, good. How are you? Pretty good. I uh, still a little jet lagged, but the hospitality's been pretty overwhelming, so can't complain. Is this your first time in Scotland? First time in the UK. First time in the UK. Yeah, um, I'm going to London next month, but you guys beat them to the punch. This is the first time. Mm -hmm. Nah, it's been it's been lovely. Uh, from the moment I got here, I just I went out and went to a show, met a bunch of people. It was super friendly, super hospitable. It was nice. Go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Um, so no pressure then. Mm -hmm. um, how how does it feel, you know, having this uh, this show, this character, that a lot of people are. Um, it, it's becoming an icon, you know, and a lot mm -hmm. of people are not projecting onto it, but there must be a lot of responsibility for you to to keep all these people happy, to make sure that you know they're, they're looking up to this character. Do you feel that, and how does it? How does it deflect on like, the performance you give? No pressure. You weren't kidding. Yeah. Uh, honestly, that that's been a really big question for me in the past couple of years. And like, you know, we grew up together. Stephen and I did, you know, simultaneously, and we both had similar arcs in life. It's interesting, you know. I I'm so proud to be a part of a show that does the advocacy that it does and has the role models and and its writing that it does. It's been interesting how we've sort of gone in two different directions because I've I've had a need as the show has become more popular to establish myself as an artist separate from from Steven um, you know p partially just because it's coming of age partially because you know that is uh, that is what I'm known as um, it's it's nice to be the voice of a cartoon that has a voice that's different from mine because it, that there's an aspect of it removed from it if it was so close together like if I was on an on-camera show or you know I grew up doing Disney or something like I, I feel like that would have driven me insane at some point. Uh, having that degree of separation that reminds me that I'm an actor, that it has this character that lives in my head, that it can do so much good and I, I can jump into that and separate from myself, it allows me to be independent as a person and say the things I want to say and work on the messages I want to work on with my music, with my other projects, and, uh, and still be a good role model for the kids who probably don't even know who Zach Callison is, but they know who Steven is and they know the messages that he promotes of love and peace and unity. And that's um, a big responsibility, but I feel like uh, the way the, the, the chips laid out really it was a good thing um, for my well-being and for for the, the message being promoted. Yeah. Thanks. Awesome. awesome question. Thank you. Okay, I'll go. Yeah. Um, hi. Hi. So, um... You have inspired a lot of people with this character. So if you're walking around or you're on social media and stuff like that and you see a, a person dressed up as the character that you've uh, portrayed, how does that make you feel? It's cool. I mean, it's it's become you know somewhat ubiquitous. I see it all the time just in daily life. Um, and a lot of the time, you know, occasionally I'll get spotted out in the wild um, outside of conventions, but normally it's, it's I have day-to-day -day interactions with people wait, wearing the merch and... Uh, it's cool. It's it's nice to the the show. It, it's become more than a show. It's become this this like movement of sorts. Um, and the fandom is more than just a fandom. It's it's like a phenomenon. And seeing that out in the world and out, um, you know, somebody wearing something that says, "Hey, like the show affected me," um, and going about their day and just seeing that in the background of my daily happenings is it's pretty cool. I, I will say, I was at a music festival last weekend and uh, I was walking through the campgrounds and I saw a dude with a Steven Universe. Tank top, and I don't usually acknowledge it or say anything. I just sort of chuckle to myself. But it's a music festival and a, a, like a rave festival, so everybody's like very friendly. So I'm like, "Hey, Steven Universe!" And the guy just like glares at me, frowns, and then moves on. I was like, Ugh, "That never happened in my entire life." Uh, that was the only time I had any sort of negative response to that out in the wild. But uh, that is the exception, not the rule. Are you surprised it's taken off so quickly and, and so uh, such a huge scale as well? Uh, at the beginning, yeah. I mean, 
I didn't realize exactly what I was getting into when I started this show. Um, I was just jazzed because I had the lead on a, a Cartoon Network show, and I grew up watching Cartoon Network. I didn't know what Rebecca had in store for the the storytelling and the advocacy and the scale of what Steven Universe, what she wanted it to be. Um, so when we were first creating stuff like Jailbreak, and I was like, this is revolutionary, like, this is awesome, but I didn't understand how the fan response would be until the first San Diego Comic Con after that. And we, you know, had hundreds of people turned away, with no space in the, the ballroom, and you know, thousands of people singing the songs, and like, so the the new page has been turned in this chapter. This is insane. Um, and ever since then, I've learned to um, not not be surprised by anything that they put out because it's it's always brilliant, and I never get a bad script put in my hand. It uh, it's almost easy to take it for granted because they do their job so well. Um, so at the beginning, certainly, but these days, it's uh, it's nice to have. Obviously, you're you're going down as a, as a uh, success early in your career. Uh, so what what are you aiming for in the next stage in your career? That's an interesting thing because I I don't let myself believe that. Um, I mean, I've been in the business for 13 years already, um, and I I I'm. My, my acting teacher, my mentor, Dennis Laval, he, he calls it the gift of contentment. And most people in the industry don't have it because once they have one thing, it's like their, their hunger for other, other artistic outlets and other projects, it just keeps oh, yeah. keep growing and we, we can never be satisfied. We're, we're, we work till the day we drop dead just because we're, we're artists and that's what we do. Um, the fact that I have this show and not just the show, but the people that work on it to draw inspiration from, especially being around them in such formative years, I'm eternally grateful for that. Um, I just put out an album in August and went on tour for that, and that's that's my current direction. I I write, I direct, I, I have all sorts of projects that I have in the works, but that's the main thing right now, is getting the musical message out there and um, showing people, and, and showing them something that is uh, Zach Callison, um, now that I have the platform to put it out there. Um, and people have responded really well to it. It's, you know, largely in part because of Rebecca Sugar and you know, fighting for every last detail of what she thinks is best and just going for it with her own vision that inspired me to do it. And uh, I, I think her advice and her tutelage has not led me astray with that so far. That's my main, my main focus at the moment. Do you think people were more surprised when you put the music out the way that you wanted to express yourself uh, to what they were seeing? Do you think? Uh, it kind of shocked people. Um, yeah, you asked that. Have you heard the music? Uh, not a lot of it, no. I was worried about it. Um, lyrically, it's it's rather shocking. I I no, expected. Kind of what I, meant. Yeah. I expected the the reaction to be more severe than it was. People were a lot more accepting of it, which which inspired me to go forward and keep doing it. Um, I wrote it about the the trials of someone coming up and dealing with. Uh, mental health issues under the lens of being a child star in Hollywood and how awry that can go so quickly and how many people I know personally and how many people I've, you know, friends of friends and, and heroes and just in the past six months yeah. that have not gone the right, the right direction with that. And my personal experiences with seeing the drug abuse, seeing the, the darkest part of that, seeing the, the famey people inside, that's that's what I wanted to go after and tell my part of that story from, you know, and not censor anything. I felt like I would not be doing it justice if I pulled any punches. And that's a really, I mean, Steven Universe can get very dark, but that's, it's a kid's show at the heart of it. Um, that was definitely a big departure and people really latched onto it. And um, so far have, have been very supportive of it and supportive of me being honest and that makes me never I never doubt being honest ever again with that music so plus uh, it gives good advice for future uh, kids in Hollywood and all that stuff as well yeah yeah it uh it's necessary um I I grew up with a very good group of friends and a um a very supportive and loving caring careful family and I still I flew very close to the sun. It, it is not an easy thing to manage, um, and I that's my word of warning to anyone out there. Do you think that um, that this is a kind of reaction, like your music is, that this, that the whole kind of cult of celebrity that's, that's kind of, um, that exists now, where people are famous for, you know, Instagram, for talking sake. As an actor, yeah. you know, as an artist, 
how do you balance that though? Because obviously you have to do like things like this today. So there's there's a level of celebrity that you have to embrace. <clears throat> is is your music is that the way you you deal with this or? It's one way, yeah. I, I feel like I'm not fully qualified to answer that question because I'm, <laughs> I'm not quite there yet. I'm actually, uh, I'm about to take a lot of time off to like um, not work and reflect and, and figure it out the more on that front. Yeah, but the music was, for that time, absolutely. It was um, it was my one light that I needed uh, to, to see the way. Um, and things are, things are different now and, you know, different solutions for different times. But I needed that outlet and... Um, that's the part of the reason I'm taking the time off. I want to get back to writing and um, writing about not just my story, but the the general cultural problem we have with, uh, specifically in LA, but all over with, you know, we're artists, but we also have to be influencers, and that that takes such a a toll on our mental health that we st- start neglecting ourselves and we enter this culture of toxicity. That's a an idea that I I want to tackle. I think in a, a future project. 